Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Ray Donovan. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I did like that the episode started with kind of us a flashback. I was wondering if that was the only flashback we were going to get. I almost halfway expected the entire episode to be a flashback. I don't think they've ever done that before. Like, there's been, like, big chunks of an episode that have been a flashback. But I don't think there's ever been an entire episode dedicated to a flashback. But obviously, it ended up, ended up being the case. But, uh, obviously, this is a story that we already heard from Ray, like, earlier this season about Mix taking the money. But what they did, I think, was kind of neat is they added even more, like, weight to it. Because... The thing is, it kind of shows you even more how shitty Mick is. Or maybe you can make the argument show that there's at least some decent part of him in some regard. Because the fact of the matter is, it's not like, oh, he went to grab the money from the Folgers thing immediately. He thought about it, but he's like, nah, he felt bad about it. He knew how shitty it was. But granted, you could be like, well, he's still shitty because the fact of the matter is, he still took it regardless, you know? Even when Ray was there in front of him, like, you know, like Ray told this story of like, oh yeah, he just patted him on the head, bounced. And it's like, it was all for the, because obviously he was in debt to Jim and the fact of the matter is what, it seems like what ended up instigating the whole thing of Jim and O'Malley and Do, um, Doyle, like kind of like uh, betraying him was because the fact is he was trying to, you know, do a job uh, kind of screwing over, you know, Jim without cutting him in on it. And it's like, the fact of the matter is, Jim even says, like, all you ever did was screw up. You were, I literally did everyone a service by having you sent away, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So, and obviously they go through the trouble of getting Jim out. You know, it's like, okay, we're going to have a meeting where I hand you the tapes, you give me money. They kidnap Jim so they can, like, negotiate stuff. Um, what I thought was so interesting is, like, for one, I love that he sees Sandy. He's like, Sandy, you look just like the spitting image of your grandfather or something. And Sandy kind of looks like, what? She's like, fuck you, Jim. Um, but the fact of the matter is, and obviously, you know, showing that Jim's not a, I mean, let's, we're not mincing words here. Jim's not a good guy either. He's kind of a shitty person, especially the way he talks about uh, Daryl. He's like, come and shine my shoes. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's super racist. Okay, okay, we kind of see where Jim stands with this whole thing, but the fact of the matter is, I liked how that whole situation ended up playing out, because obviously it's like, Daryl was like, whoa, 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 he's going to give us a million pops, let's walk away, but nah, Mickey, I know better, so it's like, Daryl, you want that many? No, 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 we can get more, because how much are you worth, and stuff like that, so it's like, okay, so it turns into a percentage of how much of uh, what you're worth, I want you to give to me, it's like, oh, 50, then it's like 10, but then, you know, they worked their way up to 20, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And what I liked is obviously when they're transferring, it's like, oh, on the transfer, whose name is going to be on it? It's like transfer it to Terrence Donovan, Terry. And obviously you could tell uh, Daryl didn't like that because in Daryl's mind, it kind of perpetuates something that he already feels that basically um, Jim kind of... Uh, reinforces because Jim had basically told a story of kind of like basically Mick, you know, claiming that, you know, he's doing right. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going to pay these bills for my wife. But he didn't. He kind of up and left, essentially, like basically saying, like, you always like bet your family's future and stuff like that. You're trying to be like, oh, you because for him, it's always like, nah, the, the wind is right around the corner and then everything's going to be OK. That's kind of like his thing, way of thinking. But Jim is kind of trying to point that out. And even Daryl is kind of like because. Daryl hasn't heard all the stories about how much of a shitty dad Mick was. Mick wasn't there for a good chunk of his life, so he never had to deal with that. Like, once again, he got fun older Mick. It's like, yeah, I get to spend time with my dad, what I've missed out on. And it's something that Ray and Terry and even Bunchy have tried to get through his head. Like, being a Donovan isn't all that great. I don't know why you got this preconceived notion. Because for him, it's like, this is my dad, so I want to be like my dad. My dad's cool and awesome. He never had an opportunity to have a childhood, you know, wasn't there for me in my childhood and everything. But like, oh, trying to make up for it as an adult. You know, because, you know, Daryl kind of got stunted because he, you know, didn't have his father in his life like that. I mean, I think that would happen to anyone not having one or if not both of your parents in your life it's it's it's, it's gonna mess with you i'm not saying that no single parent could handle you know but i mean obviously it's just that thing i think it's, i think especially because daryl is black like you know that's the thing that that's a sad thing that happens in a lot of black males lives that the fact that it's, their dad's not in their life so i think that kind of plays an avenue in that you know in daryl's life as well you know so it's you know sadly a statistical 
uh, situation that he finds himself in, that's sadly that type of environment that, you know, like I said, is a, a, in itself a statistic, and that's kind of a shame, you know, but the fact of the matter is, like, he's so longing for, you know, he's willing to overlook so many of Mick's flaws where everyone else is like, yeah, that's Mickey in a nutshell. Like, everyone can see Mickey for who he is except for Daryl because he always wants to see, it's like, no, that's my dad. But hearing that story and then realizing, like, oh, you're going to get the, you're going to transfer it all to Terry, like, you, you're not going to leave it to me to be like, all right, I'm going to divide it up my, between my other three brothers. But it's like, no, you're going to put it to Terry because he's the eldest and stuff like that. And that moment you can tell Daryl is like, oh, I see how it is. I'm always going to play second fiddle to one of your other three kids. Because the fact of the matter is, it's like, because sadly, in the grand scheme of things, because I'm sure he's always felt like this. Once again, Daryl's always felt like an outsider in the Donovan family. He's the, you know, I mean, for one, being black, plus, you know, he's kind of like, well, my mom is the one that he cheated on your mom with, you know? So it's kind of like a, it's a complicated, you know, thing. So like I said, he just, he feels like the bastard child. And that moment probably made it, you know, like I said, reinforced that. So Daryl doing what he did at the end, I'm not surprised because he was like, you know what? Screw everybody else. Because for him, I think at that moment, it's like screw being a Donovan, screw Mickey, screw Terry, screw Ray, screw everyone, because I'm, I'm going to do me. This is my money. This was what was owed to me. Cause we even got in a flashback of him being like, yo, I got a plan. And it's like, Claudette, we're going to be rich. And in that moment, Let's not forget while all that's going down, what's happening at home. Ray is taking care of his, Mickey's dying wife, their dying mother. And that's the thing of like, he's so caught up in Claudette and everything. It's like, you know, Ray had said, mom wet herself. It was like, yeah, I'll come up and, but he didn't. Hearing that, you should have gone checked on your wife. So it, it's that thing. Because even he kind of blaming Jim. It's like, because you locked me up. I, You know, uh, my wife's funeral I missed. My daughter killed herself. My boys. He, in particular, I'm not unless I misheard him. It's not like he said, my boy hates me. Because, uh, I mean, I, they all have varying degrees of how they feel about. But obviously, out of anyone, Ray really hates him. Like I said, Daryl's always been the one that's been more net positive when it came to, you know, if you want to put it like, you know, video game purpose wise, like social link wise, he's always had a much higher social link with Mick than anyone else. I know I went all nerdy there, but it, it popped in my head, so I said it. But um, so it just is the thing where Mickey is blaming other people and not willing to blame. I mean, to be fair, don't get me wrong. Jim screwed him over and everything, but it was also like you weren't because he's trying to say like, yeah, I wasn't kind of the best person back then and whatnot, but it doesn't change the fact is because he thinks like, you know, because even Jim is like, what you think like, oh, I took those coins away. It's like, no, I literally made my fortune by putting in the hard work. Mickey, you were screw up. Even if things didn't work out the way they did, even if you were out and about in your lives, the fact of the matter is how, how I know it would have went down. I guarantee you. Daryl would probably be just as screwed up as Ray, Terry, and um, uh, Bunchy. I think he would have just ended up just as screwed up as they were. Hell, for all we know, he would have probably cheated on Claudette just because, sadly, that's like the cycle, like I said, in the Donovan family in a certain regard. So it, that probably would have been almost like an eventuality just because of who Mickey is. Mickey's a scumbag, you know? And that's the thing of like, his his allegiances is almost like as you know it goes you know or his his allegiances to people is so fair weather is what I'm trying to you know get at because if things had gone his way he would have left Ray Terry and Bunchy to deal you know have they still would have had to deal with their mom but you know hey Daryl would have had his dad for however long that would have been before he cheated on Claudette and you know it, the, uh, history would have repeated itself I think. But, you know, Mickey wants to give himself the benefit of the doubt. You know, once again, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's easy to be like, oh, I would, or what I would have done for my life. It's like, who you were back then, Mickey? Your dreams are like, oh, I'd be a billionaire and stuff like that. None of that would be happening. You know, your family would be just as messed up as it is now. If not, maybe even more messed up in certain regards, you know? So while all of this is happening, Ray is trying to find a way to track down 
Mickey, uh, Molly ends up helping. And the thing is, Molly's like, wait, your dad's still alive, so you lied to me? He's like, yeah, I get it. But for him, it's like, it's no matter what the circumstances are, sadly, Ray, no matter how much he hates his dad, there's still a part of him that loves him, much like Daryl. Like like I said, Daryl's a little more positive on this, uh, in the sense of the whole Mickey situation, but Ray is still like, that's still my dad. And despite everything that they've been through, and maybe because of everything that they've been through, he's always given Mickey more leeway than he should have like obviously he's always been kind of had his issues with Mickey but it almost seems like he's always given Mickey a second chance regardless you know so obviously he's trying to fix this situation because he knows this isn't going to go the way Mickey thinks it is so I love him kind of setting up so much stuff uh for one he's got um you know Sandy's card and he basically brings up a like a um gets everyone at the bar a drink and then even tells the bar uh, tender, like, yo, get $100 off of this for yourself, too, as well. Because he knew Sandy would call and everything. And he's talking to Sandy. And, she, you know, he's like, tell me where Mickey is. or And she's like, you don't scare me, Ray. Fuck yourself. You know? Because it's so interesting that Sandy is so a part of this. But even when she was leaving, she was literally telling both Jim and... And Mickey to go fuck themselves. So that's why I'm kind of like, you're so, your position in this is weird. He's got Bunchy, Ray's got Bunchy staking out Sandy's place. She never came back. So Ray went in there, set it on fire. Because it's like, well, you don't scare me, Ray. Well, it's like, well, you shouldn't have said that. Because Ray can be scary a lot of times, more often than not. So he's burning her place down. Sandy, you know, goes there and is like, oh my God, you burned down my place. How can you do this? And then they had that lovely conversation I thought was so good where it's like Mickey's, he's doing this, you know, because like Ray's like, yeah, I'm sure he's doing all this for money because that's Mick. You know, well, that was his explanation to why, to Molly why um, Mickey was most likely doing all this. Granted, Ray doesn't know all the ins and outs. I mean, to be fair, I don't think Ray's going to care too much about like, oh, he sent you to prison. And it's like, well, to be fair, you were kind of a shitty dad even before Jim sent you to prison. Plus, even Ray has sent you to prison. Not once, but twice. So it's, I mean, technically a third time when he took you back after you were on the run. So it's like, technically he's put you back in prison like three, he's put you in prison like three times. So it's like, mm, I don't. I don't know if, you know, so I doubt Ray would even care about that whole thing. So, especially because it seems like Jim kind of looked after him a little bit, gave him work, knew about his family situation, you know, so, and that's sad. The fact of the matter is Jim was more so there for Ray and, you know, considering everything going down with his mom, more so than Ray's own dad. He didn't seem too concerned about it. So that, that's, you know, it, it kind of puts things in perspective for you but getting back to what i was saying i love that line oh, this was your legacy and ray's like legacy because he's trying to explain that you know it's like oh what he promised you your cut of it what like has any of mickey's plans ever worked out and i think it made sandy go you know that's probably true and then it's like the whole line of legacies that he's like oh we mickey already gave us his legacy right y you were there at my mom's funeral bridget you know it's like the fact of the matter is, that's going to be my legacy. And it's what I brought up before. What does Mickey do? All he does is bring destruction in his wake. The fact of the matter is, it's like, all, and that even Ray had said that, like, all he does is destroy lives. He leaves people messed up and broken. He destroys people's lives. And his twisted, you know, mind, deluded mind of thinking that he can kind of fix decades of issues by doing things when in actuality his attempts over and over again have all kind of blundered and blew up in his face and just caused more issue all he had to do was walk away but the moment he saw those coins it changed i mean to be fair he didn't leave like he was supposed to anyway but because sandy brought him those coins it set all of this in motion and it's just all he had to do was walk away literally none of your sons wanted you around anymore exception being daryl but regardless you know and it just it just complicates everything. I even like that thing because obviously like Molly's trying to handle things kind of her way, trying to talk to like the transfer agent and stuff like that. She's like, oh, the, you don't understand. You take that money. These people are murderers, even if you give them what they want. The fact of the matter is she never saw Ray in action. Like she knew he did some duplicitous stuff, but she never saw that the Donovan side of Ray where he can get violent. Him taking the, that... Uh, the gear shift off the breaking it off the car and hitting one of the security guys with it and then like stabbing one in the leg and he was about to pop him until molly was like no 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 because there's still that part of ray that wants to be a good guy especially around molly he, you know she's willing to see the good in him and he wants to have to kind of be reflected 
you know, he calls Terry there and Terry's like supposed to drive her home. But that's the thing. I like that moment because it shows Molly who Ray is. I mean, because I don't think Molly has 100% an idea of who her dad is or kind of what he did back in the day. So it's not like he's really that different from the Donovans. Like he's kind of literally in that same lane. But once again, seeing Ray, someone you're intimate with like that, like seeing like, oh, Ray kind of has a dark side. You know, I think that's going to change some things going forward. Maybe not. Maybe the fact is he stopped pulling the trigger. Maybe that's going to change things for Molly. Who knows? But I did like, you know, when the time came, like, I, I was actually scared because Mickey tries to call Sandy. She doesn't answer. Tries to call Daryl. Doesn't answer. It's like, oh, what did you do, Sullivan? And it's like, Jim literally didn't do that. I was like, oh, that suck if all the stuff that Ray's doing ends up getting uh, Jim killed just because Mick kind of blamed him. But luckily, uh, Ray showed up in time and Mick kind of leaves. But he's like, I promise I'm going to make this all. I'm going to fix all of this. I'm going to make it all up. So, like I said, he's still in his desperation to try and fix things but you know and there's that moment I thought was kind of interesting and I'm, I'm curious to see where this kind of goes it's a whole situation where you know Jim is like the fact that you should have killed your dad is like if I killed him he would have killed you. he's like no not now back then when you walked in that bar with that knife I should have let you kill your dad but Jim had told him like no ch son should ever have to kill their dad which obviously you know that's why Ray's handled things the way he does because he's never been in a position where like he, he can't bring himself to kill his dad despite everything he's kind of been tempted to but he can never bring himself to do it hence why he ended up getting him locked up the multiple times that he did so and it turns into that situation of like Jim is like all those years ago I saw it in your eyes you had it in you to do it the question is now that you have that would you would you be able to do it now and I don't know if Ray would you know because for him it's like Killing Mickey might be the best thing he could do in the grand scheme of things of in the sense that like Mickey being alive causes nothing but trouble for you and everyone in your lives like especially when you're trying so hard to kind of get a fresher start it's kind of hard when Mickey just keeps dragging you back into his nonsense but the thing is once again is that big you know big thing out you know that has to be kept in mind it's like that's your dad. Are you willing to kill your dad? No matter how much of a shithead he is, that's still your dad. Are you willing to kill him? Because killing him isn't just for you. This is, we're talking about your brothers, too. I mean, in your mind, you might be thinking, I'd be doing them a favor. You know, I mean, I'm curious to see where they stand at it. Like, I'm sure Terry and Bunchy would tell him not to do it because it's like, once again, that's our dad. But, it, you know, that's a lot to shoulder on yourself. But once again, Ray's got years, decades of hate you weren't there when mom was sick. You weren't there when mom died. You weren't there when Bridget died. You know, so it's just kind of like all that rage he has towards his dad. And once again, you can understand why he hates Mickey as much as he does. When you have all that resentment built up over all those years, of course, it turned into them having the very toxic relationship that they have. The very extremely complicated relationship that they have, you know? It makes me wonder in the end of the day... When it comes to the end of this season, will Ray end up pulling the trigger on Mickey or not? I do, it might end up being someone else. He might have the opportunity to do. He might have the opportunity to do it, but I think someone else might end up being the ones who ultimately do it. That's going to be interesting to see, you know, where things kind of go on that end. Obviously, the whole thing with Daryl kind of running off with the money. Not much he can do with it, considering the fact this is in Terry's name. Not least he's going to fix himself. It's like, oh, no, I'm Terry Donovan. It's like, I don't know. Once again, it's even what Jim said. It's like, you're a bunch of idiots. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, hey, I'm sorry, Daryl. Daryl's not, you know, he's not the, you know, brightest star in the bunch. Let, let, let's let's keep it real, you know? So it's like, he's kind of like Mickey. He kind of half-asses his way through everything. They, they are the most sloppy, you know, look at this whole thing in itself. This is sloppy work. You left dead bodies. That's how Jim knew you were behind this because it's like uh, the two bodies you left behind. It's like, oh, these are definite connections. It's, you know, hell, and even Daryl's kind of left a body behind, too. He killed one of O'Malley's kids. So well, that's going to be an issue. Hell, let's not also forget there's the other lane to this whole thing where it's like, uh, uh, Jim's oldest son Declan he was trying to bring Declan into the fold now that things have kind of gone down this path he's like well if Ray's not going to do it I'm going to get Declan to do it so that's going to turn into a whole thing because Declan might decide he's going to kill Sandy Daryl and you know uh, Mickey I mean who's to say he won't put a target on the rest of the Don Donovan family like he might be cool with Ray but you know who knows how long that lasts that but at the least those three might be targets because like oh you kidnapped me and everything I mean he might even just be like oh I'm gonna put down Mickey but I kind of get the feeling like Sandy and 
Daryl might be on that target list too because like you went, you were complicit with his idiotic plan. You know, we we'll kind of ultimately have to, you know, wait and see on that regard. But another side of this whole situation too, kind of another side to this episode is obviously uh, Detective Perry kind of throwing those pictures in Smitty's face. Now we never got the full scope of the conversation, so part of me is wondering like. Did Smitty talk? I don't think he would because it would not only mean implicating himself and a whole bunch of other people in his family, it would also mean implicating Bridger. And like I said, despite how he feels about her right now, he doesn't want her to go to jail. But to be fair, maybe he'll cut a deal with Perry, taking down the rest of her family, making sure that she is okay. I don't see that happening. But the fact is, we didn't see that whole conversation. So it's like, yeah, because even Terry's like, oh, so uh, what'd you tell her? It's like, yeah. Oh, did you tell her I was there? Oh, yeah. so I'll be expecting a call from her. Now, that's going to be interesting. If Terry doesn't get a call, that might say something about it. But regardless, there was also an interesting conversation between him and Bridget. And it's like, you know, it's like, what did you tell? It's like, I'm telling you like I told your uncle. The fact of the matter is I told her the stupid story, you know, and then it's like, and he asked the question. Why'd you sleep with Adam? And it's like, she's like, I don't know. He's like, no, 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 don't give me that. I know. She's like, I don't know. You know, she was like, I'm, I was scared that I was turning into my dad. And he's like, so you're going to become him anyway. It's like, don't. And I love that thing of like, don't use him as some excuse. She's like, I'm not trying to use him as an excuse. He's like, the fact of the matter is I'm sure I had a more messed up childhood, but I would never use that as a effing excuse to hurt you. And he walks away. I thought that was an interesting line because it kind of goes back to something I brought up before. We actually don't know that much about Smitty. Like, once again, not less stuff came up in season five. There was definitely nothing about his past in season six. But there was, you know, obviously there's stuff in season five. Maybe stuff in season six, too, that kind of goes along with kind of giving you an understanding of who Smitty is. Obviously, he kind of gets caught up in the wrong crowd, a group of people, owing the wrong people money, that type of situation. But other than that, like the fact that he gave that line of like his childhood is like, now what does that mean? Maybe we'll dive into that. I mean, maybe that'll play into the fact is that Bridget doesn't know him as much as, you know, once again, it's extenuating circumstances that led him to falling in love. And I think Bridget can't bring herself to kind of admit like, yeah, we kind of got swept up in our love affair of just kind of like, you know, I was kind of mad at my family and the fact that matter is you were you know you were cured and everything after everything I've been through everything you went through like I said it was like a traumatic situation but now the honeymoon phase is going down everything's kind of calmed down so it's like we're in a good place but now it's kind of like maybe this isn't where I want to be you know maybe it's just that self-sabotage like you know I mean to be fair Bridget has been through a lot so maybe there's some part of her that's like you know the Donovan family has not been the most stable family in general over the course of the series kind of ever um so it kind of puts it in perspective of maybe subconsciously see self-sabotaging something that's good because she feels like maybe she doesn't deserve it because it's like everything, you know, around her has kind of always been a little screwed up, whether she was really 100 percent cognizant of it or not. You know, so I, I don't know. Like, it's definitely interesting to see where things kind of take us on that front as well. But uh, I'm curious to see where ultimately all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love like to the fools, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.